Hello, I'm Bynum, and welcome to our first showcase not dedicated to any of our mods, but instead a mod just released by Abnormals, Caverns and Chasms. It's a highly anticipated mod that aims to add onto content we got in the Caves and Cliffs update. So, without further ado, let's delve into what the mod has to offer. Also please like and subscribe to help push the YouTube algorithm, thank you. Dirt patches you sometimes find during mining now blend in better with the rocky dirt, a good block for builds as well as less annoying variant of dirt, because you can mine it with both shovel and pickaxe for different outcomes. Fragile stone is the... Uh... you know what, just watch. Yeah, if one is broken, all others next to it with will crumble too. There is a deep slave variant too. In my opinion, it spices up the monotonous strip mining experience and allows players to find ores more easily. And lava! Azalea trees now come with their own wood. The azalea wood comes in beautiful dark blue, not seen in other wood types. Look, I managed to make a small house with it. Last thing from this section are the new ores. Spinal? Wait, is it spinal? Wait, let me check. Oh, Spinal. Okay. Spinal is usually quite common high up, as well as more common in the lush caves. Silver is a little more complicated. Basically ore biomes are split between hot and cold. In the hot biomes, quarter of the silver and gold ores generated are silver, while in the cold biomes, three quarters of the silver and gold ores generated are silver. In higher depths, this difference is negligible, and they become fairly equal. Silver can also be found in the nether, specifically under the soil of salts and valleys. If you're as, as unlucky, or maybe as lucky as I am, you can make use of gas explosions to, to reveal the silver ores underneath the soil. And now collect your precious silver nuggets. Your underground gameplay can now be spiced up with a couple new mobs. Meet the mine. It mimics the weapon you have in your hand, don't worry, not the armor at least, as well as mimicking if you crouch, jump or hit. It's also useful for a renewable way to get spinal. Deepers are new underground versions of creepers. Creepers above ground have been given a nerf since it's very annoying to get your precious builds destroyed all the time, but underground, it makes for an engaging gameplay that the player helps you mine out something. So deepers are going full power, while also dropping all the blocks from their explosions. The peepers. In my opinion, the most terrifying thing the mod has to offer. Their giant eye taking up their whole head, always watching you. And not just for their terrifying design, they only move when you move, adding to the unease. Really making the underground a true horror experience. Now sit down with me and hear the story of the lost goat. Once upon a time, a curious goat spotted a glimmer in a cave remote. Ignoring warnings from peers and alike, she ventured deeper into caverns might. Deeper into darkness, through dangers alone, she heard of the rocks, loose and grim, yet her curiosity pulled her in. But as she moved, the stones gave way trapping her there, night and day. Years pass by, the goat trapped tight in the cave's embrace, out of sight. Until one day, a caver stumbled near, finding something strange, sparking fear. A vaguely goat-shaped form was found. Could it be? Anyway, as the last mob, this mod adds also the glare. It's the one, you know, from the mob boat and does the exact thing you'd expect. Gets grumpy when monsters can spawn where it is.
There are so many new building blocks. Yippee! You can now cut calcite into stairs, slabs and walls, as well as polish it. Everything Chasms also added a way to craft calcite and tough. Tough can be crafted by mixing cobblestone and basalt, while calcite can be crafted with diorite and amethyst. Tough can be also used for the same thing. This will probably be removed in 1.21 since Mojang adds their own tough building blocks. Cobblestone can now be made into bricks. You can also make these bricks out of mossy cobblestone. In my opinion, a much prettier variant is the cobblestone tiles, which are bricks arranged in a different way and I don't know, I like them. <laughs> they can also make a mossy variant out of them. Now a more unique take on a decorative block. Dripstone can now be made into shingles. You can make all the obvious blocks out of them, like slabs and stairs, uh, but also a polished variant with a visible stalactite on it. Shingles can also be made flooded when crafted with a water bucket. Flooded shingles are kinda like cracked variant, so you can't get them back if they're flooded ones, since the individual shingles are missing. But they are re still really cool. Now onto the amethyst. You got all the different stairs and slabs out of the cut variant, but also the amethyst block, which is made with 9 amethyst shards. Lapis lazuli also received more building blocks, like the lapis lazuli bricks, lapis lazuli pillar, and the lapis lazuli lamp. I included also echo shard in this. It's not really a building block since you can't make like versions out of it, but I like it because Mmm, glowy. Sedulite is a completely new rock. It's made out of spinel and any rock you can find, like diorite, andesite, whatever. You can also polish it like, like regular stone. Can you tell I like this one based off its color? Caverns and Chasms makes gold more useful by making the armor actually making you faster. Lawsuits pending. Then making the tools give player more experience from various related stuff, like killing for swords, mining ores for big eggs, etc. Golden buckets are new magical versions of buckets, you know. They're made out of three gold blocks and they can expand to hold up with three blocks worth of liquid. They still can't however hold fish, so in that respect at least, iron buckets rule supreme. You can mold gold into a very nice decorative bars. Great for spicing up bastions if you decide to renovate them yourself. And lastly for gold, you have the lava lamp. In a series of their efforts to add a unique light source to every material, the lava lamp is here for gold. Copper has received just all around a massive upgrade with this mod, starting with the floodlights. A new light source with a unique shape that's great to build with, crafted with 4 copper ingots and an amethyst shard. White particles come down from it, enhancing the eerie atmosphere in your, uh, fern farm, yeah. Up next, all copper blocks now burn indefinitely in a green Kubrick fire. You can craft with this the Kubrick torch, Kubrick campfire, Kubrick candle, Kubrick lantern and many others as a compatibility with other mods. Did you feel let down because even with bundles you couldn't really store tools in a satisfying way on your journey? Well fear not mortal, this mod has got you covered with a stylish new toolbox where you can store the items that are unstackable because of their durability. Beware in the newest version there's a bug that if it oxidizes it'll send all things there to the void. So remember to wax them. Copper works into a bar and says Oh, never mind, this joke is too bad. Copper golems! They're made with pumpkin and lightning rod. And they do exactly what was shown in mob mode. Randomly mashing buttons and slowly turning into statues. The tuning fork. A great tool for working with node blocks and golems. It lets you keep any node and set it to multiple node blocks. Also, by right clicking a golem, you can order them around. Right click a block and they'll go there. And lastly, for copper section, we got barometer. Another entry into the devices family. Joining clock and compass. Made with four copper ingots surrounding redstone dust. It lets you know what weather it is. So you can always know when you're in caves and such. There's five states in total. Clear. Rain. Thunder, snow, and null. That's for dimensions that don't have water.
Ah, yes, the new copper of our age, silver. A mirrored, colder version of gold, connected to magic in a different yet hard to explain way. It's basically the sister metal to gold. Once you mine it, you can get it either in the nether to get nuggets, in the overworld to get raw silver, or from silverfish to also get nuggets. You can craft it into normal metal things, like blocks of silver, silver nuggets, silver ingots, raw silver block, blah blah blah. Anyways, let's get to the features. You can craft with them, in my opinion, prettiest bars ever, with a sort of dungeony feel. Going in gold's footsteps, you can also craft the medium weighted pressure plate. For people who never heard about these, the light pressure plates increase redstone strength by one for every entity, heavy does the same but for every 10 entities, medium does it every 5 entities. The cooler campfire is here, the brazier. It can't cook food, but it looks so much cooler, and that's what I'm here for can also be hung from ceilings with a chain suspension texture. Silver can be crafted into armor, not very durable, but it makes up for that by offering a unique defense against magic damage, that's like potion of harming and things like that. The tools on the other end do the complementary thing and do half of their damage in magic damage by passing all armor. You can see the cool new magic damage particles. New type of rail you can craft with silver is the spiked rail. This type will injure all things on it with magic damage, quickly killing anything without the protection of silver armor. Since we kinda already got into the subject of weaponry with the armor, let's continue with the kunai, a small throwable knife crafted with stick and a silver nugget. It can be quickly thrown at your enemies in a quick succession, turning you in into an effective railgun. Yeah, turning away from weapons for a bit, you got the depth gauge, member of the devices family that lets you monitor your Y level underground with a helpful display that shows you relatively where you are. Crafted as you can expect with four silver ingots and a redstone dust. For people who wanted some bigger projectile than just the feeble kunai, we got the big boy arrows. Craft them with a feather, stick and a full silver ingot. It is slower and can only go so far, but it deals way more damage than a normal arrow. Sanguine is a new type of armor that is literally made out of the death and tears of your enemies. And silver. It basically makes you a vampire. Brewing stand and is now crafted with silver instead of cobblestone, solidifying its relationship with magic and potions. And lastly, the big competitor to netherite, we got necromium. Netherite scrap has been renamed to ancient scrap to make it more inclusive. If that is used with silver instead of gold, you get the mythical necromium. Okay, in the next section I made a mistake and said that the tools inflict weakness instead of what they actually do, slowness, now that I look at the footage. So just imagine me saying slowness, okay? Necromium weapons inflict weakness on your enemies, plus the armor causes weakness aura, which I think is just thorns for weakness. That's kinda cool. Spinel, the amazing, fantastical jet wave. Oh wait. Oh, hmm. it's real. Well then, the nice pink real life gem, I guess. It has generally a chaotic nature and can be used for nice building blocks like bricks, stairs, slabs, pillars. It can also be used for a lantern. It can also be used for a lamp. Whoa. With this pink gem, you can craft a bejeweled pearl. As I understand it, it quickly decomposes when holding right click and even when thrown. It doesn't just teleport the player when it hits the ground, but when it decomposes. 
That means that you can throw it and teleport it in the middle of the air. If you find yourself having a few golden apples laying around unused, you might want to try to make them virtual. With just 8 spinels, you can make the only apple you can develop a gambling addiction on. <laughs> Let me explain. Upon consumption, the apple will give player two random effects, one for a minute and a half and the other for 30 seconds. Here is the sped up footage of me eating too many of them. Spinel has also the ability to turn deadly weapons into things for goofing around. For example, the blunt arrows are the type of arrow you can craft that doesn't damage anything that you hit. It looks like it, but there's no actual damage to the pillager, which is nice for some fun with friends. If I had any. Mom, can we have the wind charge? No, we have wind charge at home. Wind charge at home? Yeah, you can craft a blunt version of TNT called the TMT, which doesn't damage anything and anyone, only deals knockback. Now to the brewing. The bejeweled pearl can also be used to be brewed into the rewind potion. The rewind potion will teleport you back where you started after the timer runs out. With spinels itself, you can brew a brand new potion type, the Tether Potion. This potion can be put on your head, and during the time you have it, you'll get infinite amount of that effect. However, there is obviously one catch. It is extremely fragile, so any hit you take will immediately break it. Other small things this mod adds are things like a silver horse armor that's found in dungeons and stuff, netherite and necromium horse armor that can be upgraded from diamond horse armor, all of the mob heads, the mime, the peeper, the deeper. You can make nuggets out of netherite, full blocks out of rotten flesh, which is great for storage. You may have seen that around the 5 minute and 35 second mark, there was a new item dropped by the lost code. What is it you ask? That's a lost horn. There are two types of them and they play each different sound. Take a listen. And as the final thing for this mod, we got a new music disc. You can get it by holding disc 11 in your offhand while fighting a mime. If you defeat the mime, it'll transform into Epilogue by Renren. Ren. Here is a short snippet of how it sounds. Anyways, that's all for this showcase. Thank you so much for watching. I've been your host, Bynum, and I'll see you again later. Bye. Welcome to the outro. Yeah, I'm here to thank all our lovely patrons. Uh, Spencer Gilbert, Aaron Plowman, Plowman, I hope I'm spelling it right. Fuck. <laughs> And our Electrum tier member, Clef. Yeah, let me know how did you like this showcase. Should I do more of these? Is this type of uh, video something you would like to see more? Let me know in the comments. And also let me know if you have some mods I, you think I should showcase. I'm definitely looking forward to showcase some smaller mods. This one was quite big, but I don't know. Just looking forward to have, having fun. See ya.